Welcome to our training on helping students protect their privacy during online learning as part of our Privacy and Pandemic series. My name is Juliana Cotto and I'm a Policy Fellow for the Youth and Education Privacy at the Future of Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module are to one, understand the importance of embedding privacy during online learning, and two, learn privacy tips for students learning online. Before diving in, let's first reflect on why it's important to teach privacy to students at all, and particularly why it's important during online learning. And let's do that by hearing from students themselves. These quotes come from high school students in the US. I understand that my school cares about me, but no one has explained why my right to privacy is not respected. Isn't that caring? If they wanna make sure students are engaged during class, why not tell teachers about different strategies they can use? If they did, then maybe I can keep my privacy. I am sorry, but I do not want anyone to see my house. These quotes come from students who are having difficulty with video classrooms because they feel as though their privacy has not been protected through these classes. With the line between home and school more blurred than ever, students are in unprecedented circumstances and they're really looking for guidance on how to conduct themselves and protect themselves. Students can inadvertently reveal details about their lives that they would have not in a regular school setting. How data is graded, tracked, and monitored has significantly changed. Students are being asked to use more tech and apps than ever before. For this module, we're going to briefly discuss the privacy risks of, and then elaborate on what to teach your students and tips for you for these six different privacy topic areas that are relevant to online learning. New apps and tools, video classrooms, school device, classroom management software, cybersecurity, online relationships, and screen time. For further training on the privacy risks we have listed throughout this module, please visit our other training titled, Why Protect Student Data, which will be listed in the resource section of this module. For the first topic area, new apps and tools, it's important to ensure any tools used by students are not collecting more information than they should, that information is not used for commercial purposes, and that these tools are overall safe for student use. When introducing new apps to students, teach them what information is mandatory versus optional when signing up for the app. So for example, do students need to upload a profile picture to use the app? Teach them how to properly use the tools to minimize user error, such as sharing information with the wrong person. And some tips for you, make sure all tools that you're using in the class are vetted for privacy protections and ideally vetted by your school or district. Don't use social media tools as these were not created to be used in education spaces and therefore do not have the important privacy protections in place that students need. Our second topic area is video classrooms. With the use of video in virtual classrooms, this poses the risk of students unwillingly sharing more information about their private lives than they want to and can lead to stigmatization or bullying. Students can also feel over surveilled as their every reaction is for all to see. And finally, there are equity concerns, particularly when we consider internet bandwidth is very much needed for the use of video. It's important to teach students to be aware of what is in their background and what information is being revealed by what is being shown. Teach them how to know when their camera is on. So a light on their camera typically demonstrates when the camera is on. Recommend to them to use tape or something else to cover their camera so they have more control over when their video feed is on. Teach students how to turn their mics and cameras off and inform them if when they join your virtual class, are their mics and cameras automatically going to be turned on. Teach students how to use virtual backgrounds so they don't have to worry about revealing details of their background or how to use avatars. So when they do have their video off, a fun avatar of them still appears on the screen. Teach students how to use the chat, meaning who can see the chat? Is it everyone or how to use private message? Here are some tips for you. It's best practice not to require students to have their camera on, but rather have this as optional and work to develop a safe culture. There are a number of justifiable reasons why students may not want their video on, including not wanting to share their living situation or having poor internet connectivity. Do not set your meeting preferences so video is automatically shared and so that students' audios are muted when they join. 
And lastly, communicate to students in advance when they are being recorded and when the chat will be saved. Our next topic area discussion is the use of school devices. Schools often monitor the use of their school devices, so what websites are accessed in order to keep students from accessing inappropriate material. But this can leave students feeling over surveilled, especially if filters block what are non-harmful sites. If students get in trouble for trying to access certain sites, this can lead to loss of opportunity and may end up on their permanent record. The equity concern here is that students who don't own their own devices might get in trouble for things kids with their own devices still search for, but have those personal devices and aren't being monitored. So teach students what the school is tracking when they are using these devices. Is it their searches, their web activity? What could they get in trouble for? Teach students to never sync personal devices like their phone to school devices. This could easily happen when students use their laptops to charge their phones, but can result in personal photos being uploaded to their school devices or other personal information. See what's under your control for limiting what type of data is being monitored and collected with these school devices. For four, we have classroom management software, and this has similar privacy risks to those discussed during school device, as these software can collect a range of student information and activity. So again, to help students protect their privacy, teach them what the school is tracking. So maybe how often and how long they access a particular website, what time of the day is it tracking? Is it only during school hours or at all times? Explain to students what data will be used to measure certain things. So are you using the number of minutes on a school platform to determine participation points? Some tips for you. Again, limit what data is being collected. Consider if you need to know all the URLs students are accessing at all times of the day versus only if they access specific school-related URLs that you're interested in. And check in with students. Before using any data or information to determine their grades, participation, or behavior, check in with students to make sure you have an understanding of the full context. Our next topic area is cybersecurity. Under COVID-19, we are seeing increased attempts of hacking and breaches. And with students more online for distance learning, this leaves them more exposed. To help them protect their privacy, teach students how to detect phishing emails. Show them examples of sophisticated ones that target social media account users and even pretend to be from their school. Teach students what to look out for. So like a redacted email or weird wording like hi dear and teach students to never click a link in an email that seems suspicious. Teach students about what information should really never be sent over email, such as social security number, and anyone that's asking for personal information such as this over email should be a huge red flag. Teach students how to make a strong passphrase. And tips for you, improve your own cyber hygiene. We've included a link to our module on this in our resources. Next, we have helping students protect their privacy and navigating online relationships. A virtual learning environment can leave kids feeling lonely or without enough social time. There will be students who must rely on the virtual space for essentially all their social interactions. Students need to be taught how to engage respectfully online and how to build safe, healthy relationships. So teach students digital citizenship curriculum, which include important online skills, and which we have included a link to free age-appropriate resources and lesson plans. Teach students expectations for chat breakout rooms or other meetings happening where only students are present. Teach students what is appropriate to share with people who they only know virtually. And finally, teach students what to do and how to report cyberbullying. Tips for you, for any of the apps and tools you use in class, investigate what the social aspects are. Can students video call one another, private message, share photos with each other? Consider the settings you want on these apps and make sure you set the expectations of how students should be using any social features. Lastly is screen time. Students are at risk of spending a ton of time on screens. They have to be on screens for school and their education. And then once school's over, they probably want to spend more time on screens to watch TV, play games, or just be on their phone. Talk to students about their screen time. Have them be aware of the number of hours they spend on the screen but then also categorizing those hours. 
Was it passive time or was it interactive? Were they socializing with people or was it for educational purposes? And considering how much time they spend on screens also teach them how to take breaks. Tips for you, establish breaks in your virtual classes, especially if these aren't built into student school days. Find the right balance between synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. And when students are required to be on screens, try to maximize student discussion and engagement. To end this module, we'd like you to reflect on the following questions. One, why is it important to teach students how to protect their privacy? And why is it particularly important during distance learning? And two, how well do your students know how to protect their privacy? Which tips do you believe your students would benefit the most from? Thank you for joining this training.